I've come to see the market, as, and the free society generally, as actually much more robust and hardy than I once believed it to be. Hey, it's Kennedy for Reason TV. Today we're talking with Donald J. Boudreau. He's a professor of economics at George Mason University. He also blogs for Cafe Hayek, and he has a new book out in July. It's called Hypocrites and Halfwits. Don is a letter writer of the highest order, and uh, this is a publication of some of your finest, angriest letters. When did you become a letter writer? Oh, about 15 years ago, I was president of the Foundation for Economic Education, and uh, I always did write a lot of letters to the editor, and I thought, with email now, I can send out my letters to the people that I raise money from so they can see that I'm on the job, and it sort of snowballed from there. And you're kind of a constitutional sharpshooter. Well, it's one of the things I do. My friend Dwight Lee uh, calls me a uh, sniper, and I kind of like that. Yeah. I kind of like that term. You, I see a thing in the news every day or two and You let people know. And, and do you get responses from editors and writers? Yeah, about 4% uh, of the letters actually get published in the publications in New York Times, Washington Post. Um, most of them I, are just published on my blog and now some of them in the book. But I do get feedbacks from them sometimes. Sometimes it's angry. Sometimes it's they're thanking me for correcting uh, a misconception that they had. And then they realize someone's out there really watching and maybe it makes them better at their job. I, I hope so. Now, y you say in the book that for years your family has not allowed you to wear shoes watching <laughs> TV. You've had to remove your loafers and sneakers because yeah. you would throw them at the tube. That was a threat. And, yeah. and if you watch Keeping Up with the Kardashians, do you think you would beat yourself to death with your own clogs? I probably would, yeah. yeah. And then suffocate myself under the cushion. Yeah. You know, now it's not so much TV. It used to be the, the evening news when I started watching Dan Rather and yeah. Tom Brokaw. Now it's just blogs and the New York Times and the Washington Post. There's never a shortage of economic ignorance to take a shot at. Letter writing has always been very effective, from the Zodiac Killer to the Unabomber to Penthouse Forum. What do you hope to accomplish by writing your letters? Uh, seriously, the main goal yeah. is to hopefully attract young people who aren't yet familiar with the economic way of thinking, and to make a clear, concise, and in many cases, hopefully humorous point about how powerful the economic way of thinking can be, and to expose just you know, common misconceptions that, that are forever in the press. And my, so that's my, my main goal, is to show people that, look, economics is not that difficult, at least you know, basic, the basic economic way of thinking. It can be expressed clearly. It can be expressed in a short compass. And no, I'm, <laughs> I just want to allow people to understand that you don't need to write big, long tomes yes. and academic articles in order to make a sound and important economic point. Do you think America is more economically literate now than when you started teaching economics? I don't know. I, I go back and forth on that. I have some evidence that it is. I mean, for example, when I first started teaching economics, we weren't far removed from the 1970s experience of capping gasoline and oil prices. Uh, and today, we don't have that, and that's a really good thing. Despite all the complaints about rising gasoline prices, there's no real serious talk about capping them. Is that the result of greater economic literacy? I think so. On the other hand, a lot of the stuff that Obama's doing seems to get rave reviews. Uh, he's a skilled politician, he keeps doing it. And by the way, not only Obama, but you know, Republicans on Capitol Hill, they do a lot of ridiculous things. Uh, so I, I don't know, I think it's probably about the same. Your son is 15 years old. He's thinking about college. Is the future brighter for him than it was for you when you were his age? Yes, but I think in spite of the state rather than because of the state, obviously. Uh, I've come to see the market, as, and the free society generally, as actually much more robust and hardy than I once believed it to be. Uh, I, I, I would get rid of you know, most of government. I think it's just generally destructive. But I don't believe that it can easily destroy the spirit of a free people. And I think there's still enough left of a free society at this moment to allow that flourishing of, of freedom and the expansion of markets. I think that will continue. Because of that, I think my son's future uh, is bright. But it doesn't mean, of course, that the government can't grow even larger and stamp down uh, you know, those, those, those openings. And how can you make sure for his generation that they don't go through the economic time that we're having right now? Yeah, that's the 64, well, I would say billion, but given the inflation, that, that may be coming, $64 trillion question. 
Uh, I, I, just a question. I mean, it's an issue of continuing to talk about the importance of freedom, the importance of free markets, and the importance of peace and individual liberty and rational thinking. Uh, that's the only we have to in, in, infuse in people these ideas. There's no other way. You're not, it's not going to happen by electing a politician who talks the, the right language. It only happens by ensuring that the culture doesn't get too far away from one that supports it or at least tolerates sufficient amounts of freedom. And do you think that your letters are a mechanism for infusing that? Or, or do they act as an IV, getting that rational thinking into the people who glimpse your words? Uh, well, the, the, the small handful of people who read them, yeah, I, I, I hope it has some effect. But, you know, it's, 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 it's one of a, it's a drop in a very large pool of efforts. I don't think my particular drop, if you removed it, there'd be any significant change one way or the other. But you know, what Reason does, what Cato does, what my colleagues at GMU do, what a lot of the free market blogs do, uh, what a lot of the state think tanks do, what scholars all around the world do, publishing houses who still do, you know, who, who, who publish Milton Friedman's works and Hayek's. These things add up in, into a pool of, of scholarship and inspiration for maintaining enthusiasm for an understanding of the free society. Well, thank you for allowing us to dive into your pool of free market economics. I hope it's a good swim. Hypocrites and Halfwits from Donald J. Boudreau. Buy it immediately when it becomes available and enjoy his letters for everyone. Thank you, Don. Thank you.